Okay, we're booting up um, an Epic piece of garbage. Uh, the Epic is probably one of the uh, least, <laughs> well, this machine is pretty bad. Okay, uh, it's very underpowered and they're running Vista. They shipped it with Vista with only 400 or 500 megs of RAM. What were they thinking? Okay, uh, so what we're doing is we're booting up uh, Fedora on a 4 gig drive. This is Fedora 11. And I've just hit F11. Right there. Uh, to access the BIOS. Now I'm going for a USB. I've got the screen tilted pretty much all the way over because it's very reflective. And you would see more of me than of the screen. Alright, so uh, enter to select. and flashy light <clears throat> and automatic boot in seven seconds fedora now uh, why am i doing it with usb well there's no cd drive on this device and i've been messing around with sugar on a stick which is based on fedora <clears throat> and not Ubuntu, which surprised me a little bit, but anyway, uh, it's based on Fedora, and I want to try and get Fedora installed on this machine, on this Epic here, so that um, I can run Sugar as a full installation. Now, let's see. Um, I don't know where all that blue is coming from. We're still loading. That blue fuzz you see there is not visible to the human to my eye, so the camera is picking it up somewhere somehow. Maybe it's a reflection, don't know. Alright, so it just flashed something and you can kind of see it's doing its thing. You can see how reflective that screen is. I mean, you could you can easily count the number of uh, leaves on the plant behind me. Okay, automatic login, local host, local domain. Uh, yeah, okay, automatic login. Pretty birds. Waiting. Now, also one of the reasons why I'm trying to get a minimum boot on this machine is because it is underpowered, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, because Sugar is built for OLPC, it will, oh, look at that, install the hard drive, exactly what I wanted. Um, oh, and it's picked up my, uh, my hard drive as well, my... Uh, Gigabit external hard drive. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Has it picked up the wireless? Let's see if it picks up wireless. And live system user. As opposed to a dead system user, I guess. Uh, Alright. We'll try that one. Alright, it looks a whole... I mean, what I'm looking at here looks very much like the uh, pass or the uh, UI for hmm. I don't know why it's asking for all of that I'm not going to do that right now what I am going to try uh, check out oh I'm now connected curious all right, so now I wanted to do the install the hard drive. And see what that does. Whether or not it's going to be smart enough to automatically partition. That's one of the things I kept looking for with Fedora is some sort of like wooby like install. Uh, because this laptop doesn't have a CD drive, and this laptop doesn't have a CD drive. And, you know, the only time I ever use CD or DVD now is when I'm doing installations and how often do you do installations 
So anyway, I'm hoping that uh, Fedora will produce a Wubi-like install. And let's go ahead and finish this, see what the screen looks like for installing. Now again, this is, I got this from, or rather I got it off the 4 gigabyte drive there. And I made it on the Fedora USB, live USB creator, which is right there. And that took a little bit of time. It only took four minutes or maybe five minutes to burn, but I had to download the ISO. And that took a little while. All right, so that's what that is, which got me here, so that we're all on the same page, I hope. Yeah, all right, so it's going to walk me through all of the installation options, finding storage devices. I should probably unplug the hard drive, which I did. <clears throat> local host, local name, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to leave that. Don't need to mess with it right now. What I want to see is if it handles partitioning drives. And it's going to ask me a bunch of time stuff, date stuff. Don't care about that right now. Root password. All right. It's going to ask me for one, so I'm going to give it one. And next. Yes, it, it doesn't like my password because it was too simplistic. That's fine, I don't care. This machine will never see the light of day. All right, now this is what I, oh, look at that. Replace existing Linux system. I don't have an existing Linux system. Uh, all right, so I don't want this. Because that's my hard drive, external hard drive. That is my hard drive on the laptop. So I'm going to review and modify partitioning layout down here. Click next. Uh, okay, it didn't like something. It said I didn't have enough, I couldn't automatically partition it. Um, Use free space. Use shrink current system. Yeah, use free space. I've got plenty of free space in this. Alright, so I'm using free space now. Ah, come on! I've got at least 10 gigs of free space on this hard drive. At least, if not more. See if I can just do it that way. I turned off that option, review and modify. Okay, couldn't find enough automatic partitioning. Well, that doesn't look good. Uh, let's go to computer and see what's how much space it thinks I have. Right there, it's a 40 gig drive. Okay, it's not opening. Open. Hmm, doesn't like that. Okay, well, um, that was um, this not very encouraging. And that's my ATA and use free space not enough free space. Let's see if I can force it to shrink the current system. Tick tock. Uh, replace existing Linux system. There is no existing Linux system. Okay, so alright. Uh, for whatever reason it doesn't like what I'm trying to do. I've got to sign out because this is more than 10 minutes.